Hey, this is Pastor Lafayette. Thank you for joining me today. Let's get started. We uh, were in Psalm 39 yesterday. Let's start at verse 1. I said I will guard my ways, lest I sin with my tongue. I will restrain my mouth with a muzzle, while the wicked are before me. I was mute with silence. I held my peace even from good, and my sorrow was stirred up. My heart was hot within me while I was musing, the fire burned, and then I spoke with my tongue. Lord, make me to know my end and what is the measure of my days, that I may know how frail I am. Indeed, you've made my days as handbreadths, and my age is as nothing before you. <clears throat> Certainly every man at his best state is but vapor. Selah, which of course means think about it, consider it. We ended there yesterday. I'm looking at verse 5 again, though. Just that last part. Certainly every man at his best state is but vapor. You know, I know this. I think we all know it, but I don't think we really want to think about it. We see ourselves sometimes as living forever, or we think we'll, it'll never, we'll never grow old, or we'll never get this or that, and and uh, the fact is, every man's life actually is vapor in comparison to eternity. It's just a moment. It's just a fine mist. That's it. And you see vapor, it just disappears. It dissipates. It's there, and then it's gone. It's not fog. It's vapor. And I was thinking about this. I think that <clears throat> it's, it's good. David was saying, Lord, show me. Help me understand that I, I have a, I'm on a countdown. I've got a clock here. My life is just vapor. I need to, to live rightly before you while I'm here. Verse 6 says, Surely every man walks about like a shadow. Truly they do. Surely they busy themselves in vain. He heaps up riches and he does not know who gather them. Consider what he's saying. You know, it, it's all about more toys, more stuff, more things, uh, as though that's what life is all about. Verse 7, And now, Lord, what do I wait for? My hope is in you. Deliver me from all my transgressions. Do not make me the reproach of the foolish. I was mute. I did not open my mouth because it was you who did it. Remove your plague from me. I'm consumed by the blow of your hand. When, when with rebukes you correct man for iniquity, you make his beauty melt away like a moth. Surely every man is vapor, Selah. Again, he's saying, I, I love this. He's just saying, Lord, I'm, I'm nothing. And Lord, I, I'm here underneath this, this great mountain of, uh, of possibly depression, possibly uh, some kind of uh, uh, what he felt was a punishment. Uh, some type of justice. And he said, you know what? You know, Lord, when you correct man, it reminds us that we're, that we're, we're nothing. Even what we think is beautiful about us or great about us, it, it becomes nothing. You are the king. All this really is an establishing of who David is and who God is. And I know man, mankind, we love to think that we are so in charge and in control. And I believe that there are a lot of things that we do that uh, have an in-control feel. But the fact is, if you don't live righteously, you're going to live under the curse. And the curse is one of those things that takes things from you. It takes your health. It takes your money. It takes stuff from you. But if you give your life to the Lord, if you live for Him, you're not fighting against Him anymore. You're with Him. He's with you. Verse 12, <clears throat> Hear my prayer, O Lord, and give ear to my cry. Do not be silent at my tears, for I am a stranger with you, a sojourner as all my fathers were. Remove your gaze from me that I may regain strength before I go away and am no more. David, in his weakness, in this time of, uh, of what he feels is chastisement, he's saying, Lord, I'm, uh, 
I just need you to help me. He comes humbly and says, I just need you to help me. I know my life is just a fleeting vapor. Well, I'm sorry, fleeting vapor. Fleeting vapor, I guess. He says, but listen, Lord, I need you to help me. You know, tomorrow, I think I might pick up here and talk to you for a bit about us as Christians. But I'm going to leave you with this thought. I want, I want you to think about how David felt, what David was feeling. Uh, felt like he was, he was under chastisement. He felt like uh, he was being punished by the Lord. And he humbles himself, seeing himself as very lowly, as just a vapor, and not very valuable. We're going to talk about this tomorrow a little bit more. So uh, right now I want to thank you for joining me. Let me tell you, here, here's what we need to do today. I want you to consider this whole concept for a second. Think about it all day long. Tomorrow I want to take you down a different, different avenue. Thanks for joining me. God bless you. Bye-bye.